Welcome to Electron Line. Now in the light and the amount of heat received from the sun, let's talk about the solar constant. Now the solar constant is a number that's known to be about 1361 watts per square meter. That's the average amount of energy that we receive from the sun for every square meter of surface directly pointing or perpendicular, surface perpendicular to the direction between the earth and the sun. But is it always that case that we're receiving that kind of energy at the surface of the Earth? And the answer is no, it's not, because sometimes the Earth is closer to the Sun and sometimes the Earth is farther away. For example, at aphelion, where the Earth is far away from the Sun, that happens in our, hmm, let's see, aphelion occurs hmm, in our summertime, which means we're far away from the Sun in our summer, which means cooler summers. And at perihelion, we're closer to the sun, and that happens in our winter time. So that means we actually are experiencing milder winters under the condition that we're currently under. So what is the difference in the energy received in the summer and the winter from the sun? And of course, for that, we need to know what the average distance is between the Earth and the sun, what the distance is at aphelion and the distance at perihelion and it's also in terms of astronomical units. Notice that at aphelion we are far away from the sun which is in our summer time we're far away about 1.67 percent farther in our winter time at perihelion we're about 1.67 percent closer. So what does that mean in terms of the solar constant? How much more or less heat are we receiving from the sun per square meter? And of course we have to remember that the intensity that we receive is equal to the power of the source divided by the area over which it spreads. Now the area over which it spreads is in terms of a, uh, that would be the, the surface area of a sphere. If you think of a large sphere encompassing the sun where the edge of the sphere is at the Earth's orbit, we can say that this is equal to the power from the sun divided by 4 pi r squared. So that means that the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. In other words, the intensity is inversely proportional to 1 over the distance squared. So that means not only do we have to account for the change in the distance, we actually have to account for the change in the distance squared. So that means that the intensity at perihel at aphelion, let's start with aphelion, which is equal to the intensity typically multiplied times. Now at aphelion we are farther away this many astronomical units so we're going to multiply that times 1 over 1.0167103 and of course we have to square that so that's the additional distance in terms of astronomical units and if we have to square that because we know the intensity is proportional 1 over the distance squared. So when we do that, so the intensity would be 1 times, uh, let's say 1 over that, so the intensity would be equal to 1361 watts per square meter divided by 1.0167103 squared. And let's see what we get when we do that. So 1361 divided by 1.0167103. Of course, we have way more significant figures than we need in that case, but it's kind of fun to do that. And so that would be 3.37%. Let me write that down. So that's, uh, that would be 3.37% less energy at a helium when we're farther away. And that would be equal to 1,317 watts per square meter. Watts per square meter. So in the summertime, well, when it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, we only receive 1,317 watts per square meter from the sun because we're farther away. All right. The intensity at perihelion is equal to the intensity times 1 over, now we take this distance, 0.983. 2899. Again, way more significant figures than we need. And of course, we have to square that, which is equal to 1361 watts per square meter divided by 0 0.9832899 squared. And <clears throat> let's see that, what that is equal to. So we have 0 0.9832899 squared. Take the inverse of that. 
Okay, that would be 3.43%. So that would be 3.43% more. And I multiply that times 1361 watts equals 1408 watts. That would be 1408 watts per square meter. So the difference between summer and winter, perihelion, that's when we are closer, which is in our winter time. In our winter time, we receive almost 100 watts per square meter more than we receive in the summertime. A large difference. So, percent difference between A and B. If we add these two together, 3.37, that would be 6. That would be 8. That would be about 6.8% difference in the energy that we receive from the sun between our winter in our summer, we receive 6.8% more energy in our winter time than we do in our summertime. Hmm, is that good? Well, I would say so because that makes it for milder winters and not too hot summers. And that is how it's done.